In this FizzCast, we're asked to consider um, a pack which is 26 kilograms and it's been strung up between two trees as given by the diagram here with two different ropes, okay, two separate ropes and we're asked to find the tension in each rope. So each rope supports a different tension. So this ultimately is going to be a Newton's second law problem, the net force um, is going to be given by the mass times the acceleration, but the acceleration is going to be zero in this case. So the sum of the forces must uh, be zero. Uh, this is an equilibrium condition, and those forces have to be zero in both the horizontal and the vertical directions. So we've got two components of forces to worry about. Now, even though we're given a physical diagram uh, here, uh, what we've got to be careful about is not to associate the lengths of those ropes with the tension. So what you don't want to do is just sort of draw you know, T2 and T1 on the diagram here thinking somehow that this length here is going to tell me that my tension T2 is larger than T1. And the reason why we shouldn't really do that is that the length of a rope um, is the length of a rope and the tension in the rope is a f different physical quantity. Uh, I can change the tension in my rope if I was just to hang a mass onto a rope here, I'd get a certain tension, and if I was to add more mass to it, then the tension would increase in the rope, but the length would stay the same. So you can see these two things, tension and length, um, are, are different physical quantities. So let's not skimp on the free body diagram, and let's uh, uh, draw it separately from the, um, uh, from the physical diagram. However, even though those lengths of ropes give us the direction of the vectors, uh, let's first of all draw my diagram like the lengths of the ropes were equal to the tensions, just to show you why you can see this can't possibly be correct. So here I've drawn my weight mg acting downwards and my tension t1 and t2 such that the tensions were given by the lengths of those ropes. And hopefully you can see straight away that the horizontal component of those two tension forces um, are not equal. So that is the sum of the horizontal forces is going to be non-zero. My pack should be accelerating to the right um, uh, from Newton's second law. So this can't physically be the situation. What has to happen um, is that my uh, tension T2 has to become smaller. So I have to redraw T2 so its component is going to be the same length as that of T1. So now if I redraw the component of T2, that's this guy here, the, the horizontal component of T2 you can see is the same as the horizontal component of T1. That is, they have the same magnitude, so uh, they're in opposite directions, so the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction should be zero, and my object shouldn't accelerate horizontally. Of course, these two tensions, you can resolve um, the vertical components, um, and it seems that uh, the way I've drawn the diagram, uh, the, the two vertical components are going to be, if they sum together, going to be a little larger than the mass, but that's pretty easy to fix. I can just say that my mass is a little bit long, bigger, and then my diagram is a much better representation of the physical situation. So uh, now the sum of my forces in the vertical direction are also going to be zero. So this is the free body diagram that I want, which is great. Uh, from here, all I need to do is resolve my forces in the x and y direction. So let's choose some coordinate systems. Um, probably the easiest one here is having uh, x and uh, y being horizontal and vertical. And then we need to resolve the angles that we have uh, here. Uh, and so hopefully you recognize that this angle here would be 71 degrees. I'm going to call that theta 1 for, for the moment. And this angle here is going to be our 28 degrees. That's going to be theta 2. Um, on the physical diagram, I'll just re remember that if you've got two uh, parallel lines here and you intersect them, then these two angles are going to be the same, so that's going to be 28. Similarly, these two lines are parallel, uh, so this angle here is going to be 71. Okay, so now the evaluation stage is we're going to work out what the net force is in the x direction. So summing the forces in the x direction, I'm going to have a minus uh, t1 times the cosine of theta1 and then I'm going to have plus uh, t2 times the cosine of theta2. That's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, and that acceleration is zero. So the right-hand side of that equation is zero.
once again it's minus T1 because the tension force has a component um, which is in the negative direction. So remember these vector components here are vectors, they have direction. Uh, so the minus sign here tells me what the direction is. So we'll call that equation 1 for the moment uh, and then we'll write down the net force in the y direction. So let's have a look here. Uh, in the plus y direction we're going to have those vertical components of the tension forces, so we'll have uh, T1 times the sine of theta1, sine's the opposite side, uh, plus T2 times the sine of theta2, they're both in the vertical direction upwards, and then we've got uh, to add in the weight force, uh, but that's in the negative y direction, so it's minus mg. So they're the sum of my vectors, and that's got to equal to the mass times the acceleration. Acceleration is also equal to zero. That's equation two. So, I'm looking to find the tension for each uh, rope. I know what the weight force is, I know these angles, but I've got two equations and two unknowns, so the best way to solve for this is to use one of these equations to rewrite uh, T1 in terms of T2, and then to substitute into equation 2. So I'm going to start off by writing uh, T2 is equal to, um, using equation 1 here, I'm going to take the T1 cosine theta across to the right hand side by adding it to both sides. So T1 cosine theta one, uh, 1, and then I need to divide by cosine of theta 2 to get T2 by itself. So we could call this equation 3 for instance. So now I can substitute equation 3 into equation 2, and that way this new equation will only have um, T1 in it. So I just have T1 sine of theta 1 plus now I've got T2 here, I will we'll substitute in uh, T1 cosine of theta1 divided by cosine of theta2, that's then multiplied, so that whole thing there is T2, multiply that by sine of theta2, and then minus mg is equal to zero, so that's my equation four. So now I've got an equation which just is in terms of T1, and I know everything else, so I can try and make T1 the subject of the equation, and then I can put some numbers in. Uh, so a couple of things uh, I can do here, uh, sine on cos is tan, so I'm going to cancel those two and replace that with a tan of theta 2, so multiplying by tan of theta 2. Uh, now t1 is common, so I've got t1 outside of sine theta 1 plus cosine theta 1 times the tan of theta 2 minus mg is equal to 0. Um, I'll take mg to the right hand side and then divide by the brackets to get t1 by itself. So t1 is equal to mg divided by sine theta 1 plus cosine theta 1 tan theta 2. Okay, so that I'll call equation 5 for the moment. And I can put some numbers in to solve for t1 here. So let's do that. So T1 is equal to, our uh, mass was 26 times 9.8. Uh, sine of theta 1, so theta 1 was at 71 degrees. So sine of 71 plus cosine of uh, 71 uh, times the tan of 28. And if I put that into my calculator, I will get uh, 228 newtons as my numerical value for T1. Uh, what I can do now for T2 is I can use equation 3 uh, and write that's equal to my numerical value for T1, so 228 multiplied by the cosine of theta1, which is cos of 71, divided by cosine of uh, 28 will give me 84 newtons. So uh, my numerical values for T1 uh, 228 newtons and 84 newtons. So we should go through and um, assess to see if that's reasonable, as it, as it expected. Well, from my diagram, let's have a look over here at order of magnitude. I certainly expect T1 to be larger than T2, so you know the order of magnitude seems to be um, correct. Um, we can also say something about the units. All of my units for my angles are unitless, so I've just got a, a mass times an acceleration, which is a force, so um, units are also good. We can ch quickly check the components. If I take 228 and multiply by the cosine of 71, which is the magnitude of this component here, I'll get 74.2 newtons. 
and if I take 84 newtons and multiply by the uh, cosine of 28, which is the length of this component here, I'll also get 74.2 newtons. So uh, that uh, is good. They balance um, horizontally, and we can check with the same way the vertical one as well. Another great assessment is to change the angles. Because we've solved it symbolically here, we can have a look at a couple of interesting situations. So let's take the situation where theta 1 is equal to theta 2. This is kind of like we did in lectures. So these two angles are the same. And so if we then have a look at uh, equation 3, what does that tell us? Well, equation 3 tells us that we've got t1 times cosine theta 1 divided by cosine theta 2. If theta 1 is equal to theta 2, then t1 is equal to t2. So that's a situation where those two angles are the same. They don't have to be 45 degrees like I've drawn them, they just have to be the same. We can also look at another interesting situation, um, which is when theta1 is equal to 90 degrees and theta2 is equal to 0. This would be the situation where one rope hangs straight down and the other one hangs horizontally to connect to our, to our um, mass. And for there, let's have a look at uh, the equation 5 here. So in this situation for equation 5, uh, the cosine of 90 degrees, cos of uh, 90 degrees here is going to be 0. So this uh, cosine theta tan theta term would be 0. And then I've just got mg divided by sine theta 1 for t1. And sine of 90 degrees is 1. So that tells me that t1 is going to be equal to mg. So the tension in the rope um, which is hanging vertically is the same as the uh, weight of the object. And hopefully you'd think that T2 would have to be 0, otherwise we can check that by using equation 3. Over here, equation 3 tells us that T2 is equal to T1, um, which is mg, multiplied by the cosine of 90 divided by the cosine of 0. So the cosine of 90 is 0 divided by 1, so T2 is, is, has to be 0 as well. S solving symbolically describes all possible situations here. So it assesses really well.